You know, I was juicing before juicing was cool. I mean, I'm talking like back in the day, 20 years ago. In Lori and I were juicing before Hunter was born. It's a great way to get all your vegetables and all your fruits that you need when you got a really busy schedule like I had back in the day. So that's what we're doing, a show about juicing, starting off with my beet risotto. Ruby red with beet juice and finished with pecorino cheese. It looks incredible and tastes even better. Now on the side, we've got a fantastic fennel citrus salad with grapefruit, orange, and fresh herbs adds a bright crunch to the meal. Now to drink, I've got a Harvest Moon cocktail with vodka, apple juice, and a pumpkin beer served in a glass with a graham cracker rim. Now it has apple juice in it, so you know it's gotta be healthy. Let's get started. A really good juicer goes a long way. And I'll tell you something, you could take all that pulp. There's a lot you can do with the pulp. Sometimes I even take it and do the carrots and the celery. You can take that, you can mix it into a sauce. But right now, I have got a nice four, about four cups of fantastic beet juice. And what we're talking about is it's not the pasteurized stuff that you buy in the store. Don't get me wrong, that's good. But that right there is fantastic. All those natural enzymes, dynamite. Okay, a little bit more in the beet world. So now I've got some beets. These are all organic beets, by the way. Now I'm going to take these beets and roast them off, and these are going to go into this risotto. This is super simple. I do this all the time. Matter of fact, even if, I'm not, if I walk into the, into the market or at the uh, farmer's market and I see really beautiful beets, I'll just get them, even if I don't have anything to make with them. And the great thing about it is you have them, you roast them off, hold them in the fridge, a little more foil than I need, hold them in the fridge, and then uh, add them to a salad, add them to a dish. A lot of times people don't think about beets being in the, well, in like a risotto but they play well with others. Okay, uh, extra virgin olive oil. Okay. Some salt, adding some flavor right to the beets. A little cracked black pepper. Nice big sprig of rosemary, just gonna sit right in there. And because we're adding flavor to this, this is gonna be, this is kinda like the meat of the dish in this risotto or the garnish, call it what you will. So we're gonna get a little bit of garlic in there, rough chop it. Oven's at 350, we drop that in. And like I said, just do it. The oven's already hot, just do it. Get in there, start these beets. Oh, the key is to get this sealed up really good so they'll steam a little bit. Okay, so locking that down, roll up the end. But really, about any time, if you come and search my fridge, come on by, you'll find that I've got roasted beets in there. Okay, this into the oven. There we go. That's going, now let's talk about getting into the risotto. Here we're gonna make a really nice risotto. Not a regular risotto, it's gonna be a beet risotto. Starting off with a nice heavy bottom pan, extra virgin olive oil and some shallots, making a little shallot oil, dropping in some really nice aborio rice, about two cups. Letting that sit there just to where it starts to toast. Warming up, vegetable stock. And I'm gonna add the beet juice to it right now. So this is sitting here ready to go. So this is sitting here ready to go when it's time to start adding that in. I don't wanna wait for it. Beautiful beet juice, come on. And for everybody that's sitting at home right now going, I'm gonna change the channel because I don't like beets, do me a favor. I don't take you down the path. I'm not gonna do you wrong on this one. You will love this. The color is gonna be amazing. Kids will love this. Okay, so that's going, getting a nice little toast on that. This has to be done in process. There's gotta be a step and an order in which this is done. And the next one is to do the garlic. I'm just gonna get a little bit of garlic. Actually, I'll put a little bit more. Get a little bit of garlic and I'm adding it in right now because my next step after I add the garlic in is gonna be stopping the garlic cooking process. If the garlic continues to cook on too much, what happens? Exactly, it burns, it becomes brown, it becomes bitter. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just at the right spot to add the garlic in, let it get nice and just, just start to turn a little translucent, nice and fragrant, and then boom, I'm gonna stop the cooking process with, exactly, a little red wine. Each red wine go together, a little chopped garlic, right in the pan, low heat, not screaming hot right now, just toasting it off, mix that in, maybe give it a little more heat. Just getting fragrant. I got some wine ready to go. Of course, some of my my wine that I make, the Hunt Ride wine. This is a big, robust, there's a lot of flavor going on with the beets. So I'll do a little bit of the uh, old vines in. So here's the deal. 
just watch it for that garlic to turn. The reason I add the wine now is there's no other competing liquid in here. So if I add the wine in and I want to burn off some of that alcohol flavor, it's easier to do it when there's no competing liquid. It'll just be the evaporation of the alcohol and the wine taking place. So it looks like the garlic's pretty far. The rice is nice and toasted. That's the sound we want. Right about a cup, okay? Oh, it smells awesome. Garlic and red wine coming together. All right, so cook that out a little bit. And you see this process? It's just a moving it, pushing it, moving it, pushing it. And this is breaking down the rice a little bit and really creating that creaminess. And this is just getting creamier. And look at this. The more I move it, the more the rice breaks down. We're just kind of breaking the, 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 the sides off the rice. And it's just all this labor of stirring it and pushing it and moving it all just makes it creamier. A little more stock again. There we go. Look at this. I made an extra portion when you're going through all that labor of making this. Look at that. Big pieces of beets. The roasted beets that we did in the oven with a little garlic and a little rosemary. Just a touch of the, um, of the chive. Now over to this salad. Made this fantastic vinaigrette with dates and Fresno chilies and a little bit of Dijon. Tender risotto, deep rich flavor. If you tell anybody there's no meat in here, I don't think they'd believe you.